the headiest geometry of the Earth, uh, I've pulled that out of the textbook, which I find is quite funny as a title, because geometry itself means... Uh, does anyone know what geo means? Geo, geo. Geo means Earth. It means Earth. It means Earth. Um, geography, geology. It comes from the word Gaia, which was another uh, personification of Earth once upon a time. So geometry of the Earth is like the Earth measurement of the anyway, whatever. Um, so we're getting right down to the kind of shape that the Earth is in, and that's why spherical geometry is actually kind of what we're studying. It's the main thing about. Uh, spherical geometry, it's that our Earth is roughly spherical. It's not exactly spherical. Uh, does anyone know why it's not exactly spherical? For, for starters, for starters, um, yeah, you know, there's mountains and valleys and all that kind of thing. But also, because the Earth turns, because the Earth turns, um, ever so slowly, as, as you can imagine if like you had a, a piece of wobbly clay on like a potter's wheel, right? And when you spin, what happens? Well, it actually moves the clay and it wobbles around. So in fact, the Earth is a bit flatter at the poles. It's a bit flatter because at the equator it sort of bulges out. But it's close enough to a sphere that we can still do spherical geometry with it and still understand it. I'm going to come back to this guy real quick here. Is formula and data sheet it's got like the radius of the Earth? Yeah, that's right. Which is, we're going to come to that. Okay. So, we want to think about uh, a few different parts of this sphere. When you think about a sphere as three-dimensional, but the parts that we're going to be interested in are all two-dimensional because that's where geometry is a lot easier to understand. So I want to reintroduce some words you've seen before. Firstly, I want to talk about great circles. Great circles. Do you remember what a great circle is? You've got a sphere. You've got a sphere. The sphere has a center. Let's put that guy in. And if you slice across the sphere so that it goes through the center. Let me say that again. If you slice across the sphere so that you go through the center. So for example, here, that would be a great circle. We call it a great circle because it's the biggest possible circle you can get on the surface of the sphere. Uh, it doesn't have to sit across like that. You can cut through the center in a whole bunch of different ways. So for example, I could cut through it like this. Like that, okay? So long as that disc, that cross section goes through the center, you're getting the biggest possible circle, so we call that a great circle, right? However, as you can imagine, if you just like cut randomly at different spots, you will probably not go through the center. So if we put the center on this guy over here, and then we deliberately cut elsewhere, for instance, up here. Let's put it off at a funny angle. Like that, or maybe down here. These guys here are not great circles. We call them, very original descriptive name, small circles. <laughs> because they're smaller than the great circles, okay? So great circles, small circles, it just depends on where you cut the sphere. If you cut through the center, you get one of these. If you, unless you don't cut through the center, you get one of these. So I've got our spheres arranged in this way because there are very important great circles that we're interested in that are valuable for geography and also very important small circles. So we're actually going to start with the small circles. If you, whoa, whoopsie, um, if you take the north and south pole, actually I'm going to stay with this color. Let's go ahead on this sphere down here. Let's mark the North and South Pole. Okay. From top to bottom, you have an axis. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the details of how there are actually multiple axes on which you could describe a planet. Um, there are multiple poles on which you could describe a planet. There's like um, magnetic north, and then there's true north, and all kinds of different ones. I'm just going to describe it though as if it just has one. So I'm just going to call this guy the axis on which it's rotating. If you cut the sphere so that you're perpendicular to this axis, if you cut the sphere so you're perpendicular to this axis, you get a bunch of small circles like this. And they cut across the circle. Uh, sorry, they cut across the sphere. So because they cut across, we call these measurements of latitude. Because latitude, like um, lateral thinking, latitude literally means across. Now if you have a look at all of these circles, 
Uh, can put, you've got to be careful because you start to get lots and lots of lines flying around. If you have a look at all of these circles, you'll notice none of them touch each other. Do you see that? It's like a big sandwich with lots and lots, maybe more like a Big Mac, uh, with lots of different layers. And none of them will actually intersect and cross each other. So therefore, even though they're not straight lines, we could call them parallel, these, um, these latitude sort of circles. So therefore, these are often called parallels of latitude. Okay. Now, you'll notice the ones that I've drawn, all these ones I've drawn, and you could draw a whole bunch more, these are all small circles. Why are they all small circles? So they, don't the they don't go through the center. However, there is one latitude, I'm going to put them in a different color. There is one latitude that does pass through, right? And this guy is special, it's the equator. Okay. Now, I put him in a different color because you'll notice the equator is not a small circle, being that it passes right through the center. The equator is actually a great circle. It is the only latitude, the only parallel of latitude that is a great circle. All the rest are small circles. Yeah? Okay. So we've got great circles, small circles. These are the small circles that we're primarily interested in. You can draw lots of other ones. Um, for example, this is not a latitude, um, a parallel of latitude, but it's a small circle still. There are also great circles that we're interested in. So remember that axis that I told you about? So if we cut perpendicular to the axis, you get latitudes. If on the other hand, let's put the axis back on, this guy over here. If on the other hand, north, south, axis. If on the other hand, we cut parallel to the axis, that's a bit confusing because we use the word parallel over here. If we cut parallel to the axis, which color shall I use? I'm going to use blue. Um, you don't get parallels of latitude. What do you get? Yeah, so you get these longitudinal lines like this. Now, I've put these guys all over here because every single one of these circles is a great circle. They all pass through the axis. They all pass through the, uh, through the center. Okay? So all of these are great circles. We don't call them parallels because they're not parallel. They all cut each other. Every single one cuts all the other ones. Instead of calling them parallels, we call them... Uh, call it. Does anyone know what they're called? Longitude. Well, so longitude is the category of what we're describing here. But the actual, each individual one is called a meridian. Oh, of right. time meridian. You're like, oh yeah, I remember this from some level of geography that I did. British. Meridians of longitude. Okay. Um, now, just like with the equator being a really special important of the latitudes, uh, there is one of the meridians that is more important than all the rest, and that's the the one that goes to Greenwich, right? So I'm going to draw this in a different color. So we call it. I'm going to put G up here because it's in the northern hemisphere. We call this the prime meridian. I said before the parallels of latitude. The name makes sense. Latitude because they're they're all across. Parallels, because they are parallel. The word meridian, it means midday. Meridian, which is why AM, PM is post-meridian, anti-meridian. Anti being anti with an E, as in before. Uh, why would these things be called meridians? Middays? Anyone know? So, here's what I want you to do. Uh, how many hands am I going to have here? Two. I'm a hand. I don't know if two hands will do it. I'll see, because I wanna I wanna make this spin. Maybe I'll do it with my face. Okay, here we go. So you got the um, you got the sun. Okay, you got just use your imagination, right? And it's um it's shining on the earth. Okay. Now let's uh, let's spin this around a little bit. Where's Australia? There we go. Okay, here we go. So you got the sun, you got Australia, okay? So right now, Australia is directly facing the sun. Australia is directly facing the sun. In other words, the meridian is facing the sun. It'd also be sun. So what time is it right now in Australia? Summertime in It's answer. It's midday, right? When the meridian is facing the sun, it's midday because the sun is directly overhead. If you are on the surface here and you look directly up, then you're going to see where the sun is. Yeah, does that make sense? And as you can see, right, this is what I was saying. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That'll, that'll do. All right. So at this point here, you can see Australia's facing away now, so we're heading towards sunset, right? So the sun is no longer directly overhead. 
that meridian is passed along. So the meridian right now is facing Madagascar. There you go. There he is right there. So when the meridian that Madagascar is on is facing the sun, what time is it in Madagascar? Midday. It's midday. It's the meridian. Okay. So therefore, there we go. That's why meridians are called meridians. Because when a meridian is facing the sun, that is exactly midday, which is what meridian means. What about daylight saving then? Yeah, daylight saving ruins everything. So um, we'll, we'll get to that a bit later on. Okay. Um, now, just while I quickly mention um, the sun directly overhead, the most important of the meridians is the prime meridian, which passes through Greenwich. By the way, does anyone know when we decided on a Greenwich Mean Time? Anyone? Oh, I went there. It's... 18, it's in the 1800s. Yeah, I, I think it's 1884, remember? Yeah, but I remember the date too. Okay. Like, oh, it used to be over there, but now it's here. We already mentioned that the equator is the most important of the parallels of latitude. Um, there are actually two other parallels that are also very important. Does anyone know what they are? <coughs> we call them the tropics. So if you've got space on here, um, maybe you want to put them in. One's above and one's below. I'm pretty sure Cancer is above. The Tropic of Cancer, and then the Tropic of Capricorn oh, constellation. is below. Let me make sure I wrote that right so that I can really tell you the wrong one. Yeah, I got it right. Um, I'll tell you exactly where the tropics are a little bit later in this lesson, but I just want to tell you what they are. Um, do you remember what I said before? Here we go. There are certain places where it's like, okay, the sun is directly overhead at such and such a time. Okay? Um, if we actually were trying to do this at some scale, obviously the sun is super, super <coughs> far away, and we are actually mostly pretty much rotating on this axis. Now, therefore, you can see, for example, a spot like here, really obviously, is never actually going to be directly facing the sun. Does that make sense? Think about it. Even at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day, there's no such thing as noon at this point, because no matter where you are around in your orbit, this guy is always facing off in a different direction, right? At the same, by the same logic, it's a point down here and it never ever faces the sun. This is why we have ice poles, yeah? Now at a certain point, you do get to a spot where you can directly face the sun. Like you have to go a, a fair distance, right? Coming from the south pole, going up, the second you hit that point where you're like, oh, I can see the sun, midday, the sun is actually overhead. From the south, we call that the Tropic of Capricorn. That's the spot at which, oh, now, at midday, the sun actually can be overhead. What do you think that means for this guy? Same it's the same thing, but from the top. Okay, so if you're too far north, at midday, the sun is not actually overhead. But eventually you come down and it's, uh, hold on, let me find the exact spot. I think it's about there. There we go. Um, anywhere along that small circle, anywhere along that parallel of latitude, at midday, the sun actually can be overhead. It's physically possible. So that's what those are.